Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. This is Professor Diaz, and today we're going to talk more in depth about strings. So you already know a little bit about strings, like for example, we'll have a variable called statement, and we'll set it equal to uh, my name, I guess. Right, we know how to do that already. Um, but there's several other operations that you can perform that'll help you parse through the strings, search through the strings, find specific uh, substrings, and how to reverse a string. Like, there's just so many things that you can do with them, and we're just going to examine a few of them in this video lesson. So first, we can do um, string multiplication. So let's say string equals CS, and then times 3. And then when we print statement, we get CS, CS, CS. Yeah, again, like my REPL is like so slow, so slow. Okay, um, so that's how to do the string multiplication. And you can put whatever you want. Um, you put something like repeat, uh, repeat, and we can put it four or five times or 10 times or 11 times or whatever you want. Uh, but it's totally up to you. And as long as you get the practice done, I'm happy. Next, I want to examine string search functions. So this is getting down to the nitty gritty. This is something that you can use uh, it, it, pretty, pretty easily. It's fun and it's very helpful to remember these when you're coding. So let's see. The first thing I want to show you is how to find ends with. Ends with. So in order to find what a string ends with, let's say we have a new string. And we're going to say that it equals to, well, first let's create a statement. And we'll set the statement equal to I like oranges and apples. Always back to the apples. Okay, now I can create a new string and I can set it equal to statement. I have a little fleck, uh, a little fleck here. I'm not sure what that is. Um, I have a statement dot and then the keyword ends with and then in parentheses I select what I'm looking for what I want this to end with in this case I want to I want to find apples I want to see if this string ends with apples and when I print this result I should get a boolean value of true because oh <laughs> as I was saying it as I was saying it I was um, typing in true um, so this says true because the statement, I like oranges and apples, ends with apples. So that, that returns true. So it returns a Boolean. Um, likewise, you can also create, uh, you can also create another Boolean, uh, that statement that begins with, so starts with, and then let's say I. So we want to see if the string statement starts with I. And this is the syntax that you would use. You would use the variable name, the dot operator, and then starts with keyword and in parentheses, whatever string you want. Don't forget to put your quotation marks. Don't forget to put your string in the quotation marks. Otherwise you'll get an error. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and print this result. And we should get true. So we should have two trues. There we go. So it's true that the statement begins with I. If I put A, then I should get false. Right, so I get false um, because it doesn't begin with A, it begins with I. Um, all right, and there's also a way to find a specific location in the string. I'm gonna get rid of this um, for now because it's kind of in the way. And you can use um, the string function find. So new string equals state statement dot find. And then I want to find, let's say, how about oranges? So this is going to tell me, so this is going to return a number. And that number is the location where this string starts in the statement. So I'm going to print new, new string. 
screen. And I'll change this name to reflect that in a moment. We press run and it starts at seven. Well, why does it return a seven? Okay, well, we have one. This space counts as two. This is three. This is four. K is five. E is six. And then the space here is seven. So it tells us where the um, string begins. So, um, so we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I think I forgot to count from zero. Um, I think I might have counted from one. Um, but anyway, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's that. What else? Oh, you can also um, just get like little uh, strings too. Like if I wanted to find where the S was, it's going to give me uh, the first instance of S that it finds. So I'm going to 13. So it finds an S at location 13 and it tells me and returns that number. Um, ah, so I said that I was going to change this to reflect a location. Location number. You know, something like that might be a little bit more descriptive of what you want uh, to, what you're trying to do. So uh, I need to remember to do this too when I'm teaching you guys uh, that I need my variable names to make sense and to reflect what's being stored inside of them, just like you need to do. Um, so that's how to do starts with, ends with, find, and now we're going to move on to something called string slicing. It sounds kind of delicious. Uh, it's, it's not. <laughs> um, okay. So statement equals, I, I really like oranges and apples. I like oranges and apples. I really like this string. Okay. So now we're going to slice. So substring. So I want to take a piece of this string and establish it as its own variable. So I'm instantiating this new variable um, and it's going to be a statement. And then remember in the last lesson when we use square brackets and arrays and we, or lists, I guess lists, arrays, same thing, but lists where we were um, getting the zero, the zeroth index, the element at the first location, and the element at the second, and the third, and so on and so forth. And we use square brackets to do that. Similarly, you're going to do the same thing here with strings. So if I want this to be about zero to five, oh, <laughs> not my intention. Um, so I want the substring to be from index zero two up to and not including five. So I'm going to print this substring. I'm going to run it. And then it gives me I like without the E um, because I didn't I try to count in my head, um, but I got confused. I like. So this gives me zero, one, two, three, uh, oops, four, five, and then this six here. So it gets me everything except for this. So spaces count uh, as um, spaces count as part of the string. So keep that in mind. Um, okay. Uh, what else? I mean, there's other things that you can do. You can do how about three through six. Um, yeah, I, they're just regular slicing that you can do. And then most importantly, I think, because it comes up on a lot of coding questions, is how to reverse a string. And you put two colons and a negative one, and this is how to pre print a backward string. We're going to do that here. I think I mentioned in another video that every time I try to type when I'm doing a video lesson, I'm not good at typing anymore. Um, I think, I think because it's kind of like some performance thing. Um, backwards string. Yeah, I'm gonna run it, and as you can see, I like oranges is completely backwards now. So that's really, 
useful. Please remember this because they're gonna you're gonna get questions at some point where they want you to find like does this word mean the same thing backwards? And this is how you're gonna do it. You're gonna use those two colons and then a negative one. And similar to lists, you can also get um, oops, you can also get uh, reverse. So the S is at the very end. You can do negative one, negative two. That's E. Negative three is going to be the L. So you move backwards as well if you wanted to use a negative um, negative number instead. And then finally, we're going to discuss string splitting, which is something you should also remember. Uh, it's particularly useful in some of those coding problems. So let's just create a string one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we'll stop at my lucky number. Um, so you want, let's say we want to get these numbers and put them in a list, their own list. Well, how would I do that? This is a whole string. Uh, luckily, this is separated by commas. So I'm going to use the split method, statement list, because it's going to become a list now. And I want that variable name to reflect what's been stored in it. Statement dot split. And what, what's our, um, Delimiter, our delimiter in this example is a comma. So because every number is separated by a comma, so I want every number separated by a comma. And then I'm going to print statement list. And as you can see, I got myself a string of the num of the, a string, no, I got myself a list of the string statement. So statement was separated into its parts, into its individual parts uh, that were delimited by a comma. And that's pretty much it for now. Practice these, uh, practice, practice, practice as always. Uh, if you have any questions about these or maybe if you're curious, you wanna know more, um, just feel free to reach out, I'm always here. Um, and I try my best to respond in a timely manner. Okay, so that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful day. Hello, uh, this is me popping in from the future. I almost forgot to put, uh, I almost forgot to teach you L strip, R strip, strip uh, in general. Uh, so in the top, let's first just view the top. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll clear this so it's less confusing. Um, so I have a string, original string, and we have a bunch of spaces in front of it. Uh, there's also a space between the word. And when we run the code, all of the empty spaces that were to the left of the original string are gone. The uh, space that's in the middle remains. It's only the, the white space on the left that gets stripped. And that function that we use to do that is right here, I'll strip. So you use the variable name, the name of the string that you want to do it to, the dot operator, and then L strip. And likewise, if you want to do this, let's say we had spaces um, here, and we did R strip. And then once again, we have hello world. Uh, um, let's let's try this too. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna put the code that we had before back. So those are those two. Um, next, I wanted to show you uh, strip, which just gets rid of all of the extra white space um, it, from the left and from the right. So I'll put a couple in there. I'll put a couple more. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and run it now. And the, the space that's in between the words, that is preserved, but the spaces that were to the very left and the very uh, right of the string, that is what got removed. So it's a way to edit a string. Um, sometimes you get uh, situations where you get a bunch of white space on a string and it's really weird and you have to do something to fix it. 
Um, this is that way to fix it in case you ever run into that. That's what strip does. So L strip removes the white space on the left side, R strip removes the white space on the right side, and then strip does both. Uh, finally, I wanted to show you some, I almost forgot to show you this, and this is super important, um, but it's length, it's the length function. So if you want to know how long a string is, you type len parentheses and the name of the variable. So I'm going to create a variable called, um, I don't know, my string. I know, bad, bad variable name. So I'm just going to call it my string for now for tutorial purposes. Okay. Oui. My string equals. Um, we'll do hello world. And I'm going to print. So if I just put the length of the, if I just write length my string, nothing's going to happen. I have to print that first to show it to you. So here we go. So now that stores 12. So the length of this string is 12 and it stores an integer. All right, that'll do it. Thank you.